They are getting enough entertainment from Malvolio's reactions. But they are waiting for more fun because for them real fun will be the moment when Malvolio will become mad realizing that this was all a joke. Hello and welcome back to Nibble Pop. We are doing a thorough textual reading and analysis of William Shakespeare's play Twelfth Night. We have already done quite a lot of scenes from this play and today in this video we are going to look at the last scene of the second act. This is going to be a very interesting scene because this is the scene where we see the beginning of plotting against Malvolio and how eventually that becomes a complicated issue in the play. This scene takes place entirely inside the house of Olivia and we see mostly the characters who belong to the subplot of the play. Nonetheless, you must pay very close attention because just like the previous scene, this scene is also one of the very favorite scenes of paper setters who pick up lines from this scene to ask you both long and short questions. So stay with me till the end of this video and don't miss any line at all because I am not going to miss any line. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, so that you stay connected to us and get notified every time a new video comes up. This is Monami Mukherjee, welcome once again. As I have already told you, this scene is set in the house of Olivia. We see Sir Toby, Sir Andrew and Fabian. Fabian is a new character who is introduced to us. He is comparatively a minor character, but he is uh, like within this party of Toby and Andrew and uh, they have fun together. So it adds just another character uh, with the same kind of attitude, uh, the attitude which uh, focuses on making party and having fun. Toby welcomes uh, Fabian, come thy ways signal Fabian, nay I will come and if I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Sport here means fun. So they are here gathered today to have some fun. This fun is specifically about making fun of Malvolio. Remember the last time we have seen uh, Sir Toby, uh, we saw that Maria gave him some kind of idea about how she was going to make a fool of Malvolio and how they are going to enjoy this royal sport. Okay? So this is the sport which Fabian is referring to. So they have come here to have lots of fun and he wouldn't miss this. Because if he misses this, let him be boiled to death with melancholy. Now, uh, those days people believed in the concept of humors. Like your uh, body is made up of four humors, four kinds of fluids, which define the kind of personality you have. So these uh, were uh, blood, phlegm, color and melancholy. So if you have more blood, which means uh, you are more fiery in your temperament. Again, if you have more color, uh, you have a certain peevish kind of a temperament. Similarly, if you have the humor melancholy predominant in your system, then you are always brooding and in despair. So it was believed that personality or mood of a person or attitude of a person depends on the balance between these four kinds of humors or four kinds of fluids in our bodies. Okay? So he is saying that uh, if I missed this fun, then I would be boiled with melancholy. Uh, there is a kind of a funny connection here because melancholy was considered to be a very cold kind of humor. If you had a lot of melancholy in you, then you would feel cold. But he is saying you would boil to death with melancholy. Okay? Anyway. Wouldst thou not be glad to have the niggardly, rascally sheep biter who is to be referring to? Of course, Mal Malvolio, because uh, so many curse words should definitely go to somebody he hates. Why does he call 
him a sheep biter. Now there could be multiple meanings to this expression sheep biter. It could mean somebody who eats mutton, uh, but what he truly means is a Puritan. Okay, so this is like an oblique reference to a Puritan person who is also a hypocritical person. So Toby is referring to Malvolio as niggardly, miserly, rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame. So they are here to enjoy the show where this bad man Malvolio is going to face some trouble and they are going to have some fun watching him. I would exult man, you know he brought me out of favor with my lady. Now Fabian also has a grudge against Malvolio. What grudge? That he had a good relationship with his lady but Malvolio, he informed Olivia that Fabian was engaged with the sport of beer baiting. Beer baiting was considered to be a bad thing uh, by the Puritans and because of that Malvolio uh, told this to Olivia for which uh, somehow Fabian lost his connection, his favors uh, with Olivia. So he bears a grudge with Malvolio, he also wants Malvolio down. To anger him, we'll have the beer again and we will fool him black and blue. So they are going to have their revenge. Shall we not, Sir Andrew? Now we also have Andrew always there. And we do not. It is pity of our lives. And Andrew is always like this uh, extension of Toby's uh, speeches. He always provides a kind of uh, a conclusion to, to whatever Toby says. He repeats that mostly. Now Maria comes. Here comes the little villain. Now he is using this expression villain uh, mostly as a term of endearment. Uh, instead of saying sweetheart, he is calling him her a uh, villain. How now my metal of India? Now these are the moments where we see that language of Shakespeare is accommodating uh, the concepts of expansion that the British uh, government was uh, you know, hoping for. Colonialism was at its rudimentary stages, you can see. Colonial expansion was just starting and they were aware of the richness of India. You have references uh, of rubies and Ganges, okay, in, in case of Marvel, if you have gone through that poem to his choir mistress. Uh, we have lots and lots of references to Indian gems and jewels and gold uh, in contemporary uh, poems uh, and uh, literature during uh, the Elizabethan and Jacobian times. Here also we see that kind of a reference because they had this feeling that India is a very rich land which it was because well England was about to loot it black and blue. Toby calls Maria gold and he calls her Indian metal. Get ye all three into the box tree. Now Maria is giving them specific instructions. They are like in a garden area and there is this box tree. Okay, So you have to imagine this whole setup. The stage was set in such a way that there was this surface which was the garden of course and there was a spot on the stage which we have to imagine as the as a tree box where Maria wants Toby and uh, the other people there to move. Why? Because she wants them to observe what is happening to Malvolio. Malvolio will be coming uh, to this place and doing certain things and this whole show will be seen by Toby, Fabian, Andrew. Okay? And uh, this whole idea of double audience is very interesting because whatever Malvolio will be doing, he will have two sets of audience. One set is within this play, you know, Toby and his people watching Malvolio and there is this other audience, uh, we who are watching the play on the stage. Alright, so uh, you can say Malvolio is doubly exposed here and we will also uh, see what is happening with Toby and his friends. Okay, so that's a strange kind of stage setup. Get ye all three into the box tree. Malvolio is coming down this walk. 
he has been wonder in the sun practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. So this half an hour Malvolio had been behaving in a strange way, you know, uh, just watching his shadow, practicing things, uh, doing some funny acts. And why is that? We will come to know. Observe him for the love of mockery. For I know this letter. Now Maria is holding a letter. The letter is not yet given to Malvolio. Okay, she's holding the letter. Will make a contemplative idiot of him. This letter, what does the letter contain? We will get to know that too. But we know that this letter is written by Maria, imitating Olivia's handwriting to confuse Malvolio, to give him idea that it is Olivia who loves him. It's like a love letter to Malvolio. This is something she's holding in her hand. Close, in the name of Justin. Go, 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 go. You must hide yourselves. As the men hide, she drops a letter on the surface. Lie thou there. So she is talking to the letter now. For here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Trout, the fish, that is caught with uh, tickling. So it's like Malvolio is imagined to be uh, a a fish approaching the bait. So it's like a trap, she has said for Malvolio. And she leaves the place. Malvolio enters and he is behaving in a strange way. You remember in the scene where Maria was talking about her plans to fool Malvolio, she had said that she would give him hints about Olivia's affections for him. Okay. So some hints are already given to him by Maria. Malvolio, who has not yet received that letter, is already under the impression that he might have some chance, you know, of getting in a relationship with Olivia. He's already thinking about that before he even reads that letter. So while he enters, he's thinking about those things. First, he talks about his own situation. Just what fortune. All is fortune. Maria once told me, that hint which Maria was talking about. Maria once told me she did affect me. She means Olivia. So Maria once told me that Olivia thinks about me in a positive way, admires me. And I have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Like once upon a time, Olivia had said that Malvolio, you have such a serious attitude. I would love my husband to be of this nature. Well, he imagines all this or maybe Olivia had made a compliment to him that you have a good attitude, a sober attitude. You see, it was very natural for Olivia to have that kind of a feeling towards Malvolio because she was seeing people like Toby getting drunk in the midnight, creating chaos. And on the other hand, she was seeing Malvolio. Now imagine yourself in Olivia's situation. Your father is dead, your brother is dead. You have no parent figure and Malvolio is the butler with a very serious and sober personality. And he takes care of the household, he takes care of the servants, he takes care of the order of the household. So, of course, you start depending on this guy and of course, you feel that you owe him something like you're indebted to him and you like that kind of seriousness in your main servant, right? But if that main servant confuses this feeling with feeling of love, that is his problem, not her, okay? All right. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. Of course, she doesn't show uh, any kind of respect to people like Toby uh, or other servants uh, because they lack the kind of superior air which Malvolio has. Okay, because Malvolio has always been a butler in this house. So he has some authority which Olivia respects. But Malvolio thinks that she is giving him a hint that I consider you as more than a servant. He doesn't do that. What should I think on it? How should I think about it? Now, we will have some comments from Toby and Fabian and Andrew 
because they are watching Malvolio speak all these things from the tree house. So, here there might be an interruption, you might feel like the narrative of Malvolio is interrupted, but it is not that. These comments add to the humor because Malvolio cannot hear those comments, they are speaking in hushed voice, but we as audience can hear what they are saying. Okay. So, they are reacting to whatever Malvolio is saying. So, right when Malvolio is talking about uh, his possibility of a romantic relationship with Olivia, we have Toby and Fabian and Andrew comment on that. And what are their comments? He is an overweening rogue. Oh, peace. Now, Fabian does not want Malvolio to hear them. So, he wants them to be quiet. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. Now, turkey cock means uh, a bird who looks very proud, okay, with lots of plumes and feathers. Maybe Malvolio is actually wearing a hat with lots of feathers and plumes in it. In some of actual productions, like uh, when this play was staged, Malvolio was seen wearing a very uh, flamboyant hat with lots of feathers, of course, in the Puritan style. How he jets under his advanced plumes. So, this is basically about the attitude of Malvolio more than his actual hat which is probably wearing. Fabian is saying that see Malvolio is bragging. So, he is like a turkey cock who is very proud. Slight. I could so beat the rogue. Now, Andrew is blunt and he does not have much wit about him. So, all he knows about is beating people. He talks about beating people. He does not actually beat people. He does not have the guts to beat people. He says I will beat him. Peace, I say. Now, Toby wants them to be quiet. Now, Malvolio says, to be count Malvolio. So, he is going on dreaming. He has his dreams. Now, these dreams were natural. If you are a butler, it does not matter. You can always have dreams of changing your social position. That is a legitimate dream. Everybody has rights to dream big. Okay. So, it is okay to imagine yourself as a count if you are a butler. Fine. But, the problem is somewhere else. Our drug, pistol him, pistol him. We should kill this guy. Peace, peace. There is an example to it. I mean, people do get higher in their position. There are examples. Now, he refers to an incident. The lady of the Strashi married the yeoman of the wardrobe. So, there was this yeoman who is uh, like socially inferior to this woman the lady of the strategy who got married to her. So, he is seriously thinking about getting married to Olivia, okay. thinking about social promotion here. That is the problem. I mean, it is okay to dream, to be ambitious, but he is using Olivia not because he loves her, but she is a means, a road to reach what he wants to be. She, she, is, she is irrelevant here. That is not good. That is not love, right? Fire on him, Jezebel. So, Andrew, he, he calls Malvolio Jezebel. Now, in the Bible, it was written that Jezebel was King Ahab's proud widow. Okay. She was proud and she painted her face and looked out at a window to abuse Jehu, who eventually gave this command and she was thrown down, eaten by dogs. Uh, anyway, so Jezebel is a figure of pride and Andrew does not have much idea about all these things. I am very sure about it. He must have taken up this phrase in a pub or somewhere and he just uses it because he knows that Jezebel means pride, uh, somebody who is proud and Malvolio looks very proud right now. So, he uh, tries to show his uh, biblical knowledge because he's always trying to impress people, telling them, see, I am very knowledgeable. So, he uses the expression, fire on him, Jezebel. Oh, peace. Now, he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Now, Malvolu is going on talking about what would happen if he was married to Olivia. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. So, he is imagining a time when like he is just past the honeymoon period with Olivia. He is looking after these affairs of the state. He is like a king in a kingdom. Oh, for a stone bow to cut him in the eye. Calling my officers about me 
in my branched velvet gown. So it's going on imagining. He'll have officers about him. He'll be wearing expensive gowns. Having come from a day bed where I have left Olivia sleeping, well, my wife in my bedroom and I in my courthouse with my officers, such dreams, such dreams, okay. Fire and brimstone, a piece, piece. So they, they are commenting again. And then to have the humor of state, I will talk to my officers to know about the situation of my territories because I would be the count then. Why? Because women were not supposed to have properties. You might inherit a lot of property from your parents, but it's like the moment you get married, if you're a woman, that property automatically goes to your husband and you are just like a trustee waiting to hand that property over to a man. That was the sorry state of affairs. And this was the main problem which we see in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, which you will be reading in your course uh, sometime. I'm very sure of that. This social issue is obliquely hinted here. Okay, so if you have eyes, you can see how Shakespeare is giving you the picture of society here. And after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place, so I will be instructing the officers. I will give them this feeling that I am the boss. As I would, they should do theirs to ask for my kinsman, Toby. I would ask for Toby to come and pay his respects to me. Ah, then imagine Toby was listening to all that. How would he react? Balls and shackles. Oh, peace, peace, peace. So Fabian knows that he's going to say something stupid. Seven of my people. Imagination running wild here. Seven of my people with an obedience start. I mean, the moment I say them, order them to fetch Toby, they will, you know, jump up and run and bring Toby in. Make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch or play with my some rich jewel. So he's wearing this badge probably hung about his neck uh, which shows that he's a butler and he is touching that chain which represents his butlerhood and he's imagining that chain to be some rich jewel which he would be wearing because he was now Count Malvolio. Okay. Toby approaches. He's imagining. Toby approaches. Curtsy is there to me. Now, the, when Toby hears Malvolio saying that Toby would come and pay his respects to Malvolio, the only thing that Toby says, shall this fellow live? I mean, after saying this, would I let him survive even? Okay, so angry. Though our silence be drawn from us with cards yet peace, Fabian wants Toby to be quiet so that Malvolio doesn't have any idea that they're watching him. I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. I will speak in a controlled way with a controlled smile, something which is hated by Toby. And does not Toby take you a blow on the lips then? So Toby is going on commenting that, yes, you will, you will approach me and I'll leave you. I'll just simply blow your nose. Saying cousin Toby, now that he is married to Olivia, Toby is his cousin too, okay, cousin-in-law. So he would say, cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your knees because I'm now connected to your niece, Olivia. Give me this prerogative of speech. So I have this privilege of speech. I have this right to tell you. Toby from the treehouse wants to know what will will you would tell that Toby, okay, in his imagination. What, what? You must amend your drunkenness. Toby from the treehouse is totally out of his mind. Out scab. So he is cursing Malvolio, although in a very low voice because he doesn't want Malvolio to hear him. Nay, peace, or we break the sinews of our plot. So please be quiet because this is where our plot 
is getting more and more strong so we should not kill our plot now sinew means muscles the, the important parts of our plot the fabian wants toby to be quiet besides you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight of course he is referring to andrew and andrew knows that whenever somebody uses the word fool or foolish knight andrew knows that's me because he's so sure he is foolish and he is the foolish knight whenever somebody refers to this expression this is me i warrant you so andrew from the top is so excited that somebody is talking about him one sir andrew so malvolio is now naming the person i knew it was i many do call me fool and then malvolio sees that a letter or something is in front of him lying in front of him now he notices the letter which maria had dropped so already malvolio is half inside his this trap now this trap is complete he picks up that letter what employment have we here oh what is this he picks up now fabian says now is the woodcock near the gin now the bird is near the trap toby prays to god and god please let him read it aloud only then we'll have fun malvolio takes up the letter by my life this is my lady's hand you know this is my lady's handwriting i know these be her very seas her youth and her tears and thus make she her great peace if you have the feeling that these are obscene references to something which we are not going to talk about in this video you are right there are obscene implications of these words I'm not going into that just just look at the way he is interpreting uh, this whole thing it is in contempt of question her hand out of question i do i have no doubt that this is written by olivia and you want some explanation her sees her use and her tease why is that so andrew he is foolish he doesn't know what is talking about mal will you reading the letter to the unknown beloved this and my good wishes her very phrases by your leave wax soft and the impressure of her lucrece so he notices that there is a seal impression like when somebody wrote a letter somebody uh, with a social position they would seal that and he could see that this letter bore the seal of olivia okay with which she uses to seal it is my lady to whom should this be now there was no name written where people write address or uh, the person's name to whom a letter is addressed so this is a letter without name of a person to whom it is written that is blank so now melvolo is trying to imagine to whom has olivia written this letter he opens the letter fabian is excited this wins him liver and long all so liver is like the site of passion so he is going to be passionately fooled now okay melvolo is going on reading there is a little bit of poetry first which he encounters jove knows i love but who lips do not move no man must know no man must know what follows the numbers altered no man must know so melvolo is trying to read the whole thing slowly changing his tone trying to figure out if there is any inner meaning in every expression that is coming across and he says if this should be the melvolio is she talking about me and then he continues reading toby is going on commenting from behind i may command where i adore command means to rule so clearly he thinks that olivia is saying that olivia is ruling somebody whom she has fallen in love with now he thinks that okay i am her butler so i am her servant so she is ruling me she is commanding me that means it's me she is talking about but silence like a lucrece knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore so i can't speak out i'm so 
struck by silence, like as if a knife has pierced my heart. M O A I doth sway my life. M O A I. Now, interpreters down the line have tried to explain to us different things about this, but the most logical thing is that M O A I, since uh, capital letters are used, it apparently looks like an abbreviation where M stands for something, O stands for something. So, what are the four things that make up somebody's life according to people of those times? We know that they thought that earth, air, water and fire. But earth, air, water and fire, uh, they begin with E, A, W and F. But here we have M, O, A, I. Well, if you look at the classical counterparts of these four elements, you will find words like mare, from which we have the word marine. Okay, So, mare, which means sea, that represents water. Then we have orbis, okay, something which is connected to earth. All right. Then we have aris or air, which is A. And then we have ignis clearly in connection with fire. So, M O A I clearly correlate with the four elements that is earth, water, fire and air. But why are these letters used? Why does not Shakespeare write E, A, W and F? That would be more clear, right? Earth, water, fire, air. Because M O A I would trap Malvolio in thinking that this is all about him. How? Let's see. M-O-A-I does sway my life. Nay, but first let me see, let me see, let me see. Just trying to figure out the meaning of M-O-A-I. <laughs> what dish of poison has she dressed in? Fabian knows that Malvolio is almost poisoned. Like this is so clever on the part of Maria that he's totally impressed. I may command where I adore. Why? Uh, she may command me. Mm, I am her servant. I serve her. She is my lady. So that fits it. So he is trying to fit every line to himself because Malvolio is so obsessed with himself. Almost like he is a narcissist you can say that he somehow manages to justify everything that this world is all about him. And this world revolves around him. Okay. So, he is not a true Puritan in that sense because a Puritan believes that the world revolves around God. Malvolio shows that he is a Puritan, but he is a narcissistic prude. Okay. Too proud, too proud to be considered Puritan at all. That this is evident to any formal capacity. Any normal man would know that she's talking about me here. There is no obstruction in this, and the end. Oh, should that alphabetical position pertain? Um, but what is the meaning of all that? If I could make that resemble something in me, M O. A, I, now he is going on thinking about those four letters. M, Malvolio. <laughs> he comes to this conclusion, the M stands for Malvolio. M, why? That begins my name. Fabian is excited because he knows that Malvolio is going to really, really find himself reflected in that letter. M. But then there is no consonancy in the sequel. Um, consonancy in the sequel means he doesn't get the arrangement according to his name. I'll explain why. Mm, that suffers under probation. All right, let me think about it. A should follow, but O does. Why should A follow? Because M A Malvolio. If you look at the spelling. Uh, then it should be M A O I Malvolio. So, if you can 
pick out these letters from his word, his name, the order would be after M, A should be written. But here he says O, A should come and O shall end I hope. So Fabian is going on commenting and Toby is saying I and I'll cuddle him and make him cry O. Oh. So he's talking about the letter O, Malvolio and they are talking about the expression O. And then I comes behind. So he is going on talking about that M O A I. And when he says I, Fabian talks about I, something which you see with. I, and you had any I behind you, you might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. So you have no sense. So beware. So Fabian is again commenting. Now Melvoli is going on justifying the letter. M O A I. This simulation is not as the former. This puzzle is more complicated. And yet to crush this a little, I mean, if you just ch change the order of the letters, it would bow to me, it would match me. For every one of these letters are in my name. Mm. He somehow manages to link MOAI to himself. Soft. Here follows prose. So after that poem, there are some lines written in prose. Now he reads them. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. So if you find this letter, you should revolt. You should change yourself. In my stars, I am above thee. So my position is above you. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness. And some have greatness. Trust upon them. This is like a forever remembered quote by Shakespeare. And this quote is written by whom? Maria. Maria knows the weakness in Malvolio. He wants to be great, but he knows that he is not born great. Neither will he achieve greatness. The only way to achieve greatness is for him to get it thrust upon him. If somebody dumped greatness on him. So this was a situation where greatness was there hanging above him, ready to jump on him. Because Olivia presumably asks him to be great because now greatness is going to be thrust upon him. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be. So, fortune is waiting for you. You should change. And how you should change yourself? Cast thy humble slow. Don't be like a servant. Don't be so humble. Okay. So, show some arrogance. Okay. Be manly. And appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman. Whenever you find a kinsman, fight with him. Surly with servants. Behave badly with servants. Why should you behave well with servants? You are above them. Let thy tongue tell arguments of state. Talk of political things. Talk of important things to me. Because you are going to be not a servant anymore. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. Be different from others. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. She means that she is suffering because she can't have him. So she is sighing for him. So it's like a declaration of love. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross guarded. Now, Maria cleverly puts in these lines. She knows that Melville will be so much engrossed in this whole feeling that he would not even remember if Olivia had actually commended him for wearing yellow stockings or being cross gartered. Cross gartering is like oh, when somebody's garter uh, around their stockings is crossed. He would feel that yes, maybe I don't remember. Maybe she had appreciated me for those things. This is how uh, it's going to be a bad thing for him eventually we'll see. I say remember, go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so.
everything is in your hands now. If not, let me see the steward still. If you don't want to be my husband, if you do not want to embrace this fortune, remain as my servant. The fellow of servants are not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee. That means she is not even writing her name in the letter. It's an anonymous letter. But the way she has written, Maria has written, it looks like Olivia is writing this letter because Olivia is ready to change services with Malvolio. She wants to become his servant. That is, well, that's a very patriarchal way of talking. But anyway, she wants to serve him as his wife. And then it's written, the fortunate unhappy. Mm -mm, very, very patriarchal. <laughs> I mean, this is so cliched. The whole point is Maria wrote this letter to exploit the weakness in Malvolio, the weakness uh, which she knows about. So Malvolio is responsible to a lot of extent in his unfortunate bullying, you can say, or gulling. And you might be asked questions like, is it very cruel? Is it very justified to, you know, rag a man like this? You might always say that, why Malvolio? Was it only because he was stern? Was it only because he was serious, not fun loving? No, it was because he had this innate weakness and he was a hypocrite. Okay. So to some extent, serves him right. Anyway, look at his interpretation here. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. Mm, now I know. I will be proud. How more proud will he be? Anyway, he will be proud. He thinks he is not proud enough. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point devised the very man. I am mm, going to follow this letter. Whatever instruction is given. I am going to do everything in it. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me. I will not be fooled by my imagination because I know this is true. For every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. Oh, he is totally convinced now. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross guarded And in this she manifests herself to my love. Mm, this is hint enough. Now I'm sure it's my lady. And with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. So he is convinced that it's Olivia and he wants to make sure that she continues to like him. So what he will do? I thank my stars I am happy. I will be strange, stout in yellow stockings. I will be wearing only yellow stockings. Because he wants to reinforce that feeling of love which is there in Olivia. And cross guarded even with the swiftness of putting on. I will practice cross gartering so much that I can cross garter myself any time. Jove and my stars be praised. And then he notices that there is a small little postscript. Postscript is when, when the writer of a letter, he forgets to write something in the letter. But after finishing the letter, he just adds as a postscript, just under the letter with PS. He finds a postscript there. Thou canst not choose, but know who I am. So you know, you, whatever you have realized is true. That is me. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Please smile whenever you come in front of me. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear my sweet, I pray thee. Jove. I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou will have me. So Malvolio is going to face Olivia. After this episode, whenever we will see Malvolio facing Olivia for the first time, we will see him in yellow stockings, wearing cross garters, smiling 
and imagine Olivia's reaction who is in a very very sad mood right now not just because her brother had died she said for that too she has fallen in love with a person who clearly is showing no interest so in front of that sad Olivia this funnily dressed Malvolio smiling will not be a very happy sight Olivia would not entertain this. Olivia would not like this at all. Maria knows this. Okay. Malvolio leaves. Now Fabian, Toby, they are commenting on this whole episode. I will not give my part of this port for a pension of thousands to be paid from the Sophie. Oh God, this was so hilarious. Fabian says that this was worth even a pension. Like he's comparing this with Money is like money is worth. I could marry this wench for this device. A wench is again a bad word. You don't call a good girl a wench. But Toby is Toby, and when he says wench, he means it in such a loving way. Uh, we can't blame him. And Andrew, he always says what Toby says, and he says I could too. So well, they are very happy with Maria. And ask her no other dowry with her, but such another jest. So Toby says that he can marry Maria for this. And just one condition will be laid that she should uh, make fun of somebody just like this. Now Maria comes. Here comes my noble gull catcher. So everybody is very excited and happy with Maria. Will thou set thy foot on my neck? So Toby is asking Maria, well, to be quite intimate with him. Or on mine either, Andrew, always the echo of Toby. Shall I play my freedom at trade trip and become thy bond slave? So they are so impressed. And Toby is clearly proposing to Maria that I can be your bond slave uh, because of what you've done. In faith, or I either. Why, thou has put him in such a dream. But when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. So Toby knows that the whole thing is funny, not because of what Malvolio is doing now. They are getting enough entertainment from Malvolio's reactions. But they are waiting for more fun. Because for them, real fun will be the moment when Malvolio will become mad, realizing that this was all a joke. That's cruel of Toby, but he really wants his revenge. So you have put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. This is something uh, which must have happened in A Midsummer Night's Dream, if you know the story. Beautiful story. Some, maybe someday I'll tell you the story of Midsummer Night's Dream. Even there, this fairy king, uh, the way he used a simple village man uh, to get back at his wife and in the process that simple man his emotions are played with malvolio's emotions are also being played with but how much of this cruelty can we sanction can we say it's okay we haven't yet seen how cruel toby and his group can be. At this moment, even we are feeling entertained. That is funny. We also don't like Malvolio much. He's a spoiled sport. But we will have to see what happens in the future course of action inside this play. Nay, but say it's true. Does it work upon him? Like aqua vitae with a midwife is like a medicine. It works wonders. If you will then see the fruits of the sport, Mark his first approach before my lady. Now you should see how he behaves in front of Olivia. He will come to her in yellow stockings and it's a color she abhors. So Olivia hates yellow and cross gartered, a fashion she detests. So she hates cross gartering too. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition. This is not suitable to her mood right now. She is not in a smiling mood now. So when Malvolio will come smiling at her, she will be infuriated. Being addicted to a melancholy as she is, but it cannot but turn him into a notable content. She would hate Malvolio. If you will see it, 
follow me. So they want to go and see. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. So gates of Tartar like hell, uh, Tartarus is hell. Uh, so they all want to witness how Malvolio makes a fool of himself. Anyway, this scene was hilarious, comic. Uh, and to some extent, we have disturbing questions coming up that how far this joke would continue to remain funny and harmless and at what point this joke might change its character to become more sinister and dark something which we are not comfortable with okay so we will come to all these questions when we will eventually see what happens to Malvolio at the end uh, we have reached the end of the second act. Congratulations. So, rising action has come to the point where we are approaching the climax now. Climax, the most complicated part of the play where everything is tied up to a very disturbing knot. Something which appears to be impossible to break. After which we will have the falling action of Teluma. So, in the first scene of third act, we will come across Cesario and Feste, the two most level-headed, most loved characters of this play, in conversation, interesting conversation, but that will be in our next video. So, I am sure I will find all of you in my next video, which we will post very soon after this video is posted. So, keep commenting and thank you for your wonderful comments. Your encouragement makes us go on despite every hurdle that we face. So thank you once again. This is Monami Mukherjee signing off. Till our next video, stay happy, stay subscribed.